I want as many casting people to know who I am so that when my agent picks up the phone or submits me, they are familiar with me. So um, I try to do the advertising rule of seven. I try to get my face or my name in front of them seven times um, and then they actually believe they know me. So I'm very big on social media. I try to um, friend or communicate um, on all the platforms with as many people in the industry as I possibly can. I do drop bys. There's always offices around the casting office that you go to for the audition. Pop in, drop off a headshot. You said that you've got your reporter and your variety. I mean, right now those magazines are online and yes. they're accessible. There's also Deadline Hollywood and The Wrap. And The Wrap. And also there's a, one that I love is The Cast About. You pay, it's a subscription minimal. Okay. But what it shows you is it shows you who's casting what. Mm. So if you hear, oh, it's like West Side Story. So you look up West Side Story because Spielberg is in West Side and Story. Rico. Oh, was. So you look and it shows you the casting director and then you can click on and it has their address so it's just another way to get in that's yeah. excellent you have to be proactive yes i as an actress made myself a promise that i would open every single one and look at the auditions but i you know other director and executive producers you know they would just go uh oh okay she looks like she might be the part and skip a bunch so from the thumbnail, there's already a cut sometimes. That's why it is important to have a hot thumbnail that gets people's eye. The thumbnail, I would make it, try to make it look like the character. I'm a big thank you card person. I don't thank, uh, thank anybody for an audition. That I think is too, can I say, can I swear? No, yeah. No. Ass kissy. Okay. It's too, it's too much. What I like to do is say something like, hey, the guy, Bob, who ran camera, or your assist, your casting assistant, um, was so helpful to me, uh, you know, and I just love the way um, you run your office. Something like that which is again a compliment to the casting director. It also, you know, I slip my, my card in, my photo in. IMDB is a big ass database that lists every professional's television and film credits. As someone in the business, it allows you to upload your pictures, resumes, bio, contact information, trailers, demo reels. It's amazing. Having credits on IMDB lets people know you are a professional. And if you're looking for a representation in the business, IMDB lists agencies, agents, the talent they represent, and all their contact information. But you need a subscription to IMDB Pro to access all that great information. And it does cost $150 a year. It is the best $150 you can spend on your career. I promise you, having an IMDB Pro subscription is a necessity for your career. When you get your account, make sure to keep Keep your information and photos current. IMDB Pro is a great tool to look for work and even better to look up people that you are working with or interviewing for. It's important for you to know about these people, know what they do, so when you meet them, they will be so impressed with the fact that you know their business. They will probably want to work with you again. If you are a new actor and you don't know anything about the Screen Actors Guild, I encourage you to look into it as well. The union is there to protect your work. It's, it's like any other union. We negotiate contracts, we uphold the contract. It's very important to be informed. So I would like to invite anyone that is watching this video. If you're a member of the Screen Actors Guild, I invite you to be more informed about how your union works. And also check out the amazing benefits that the union provides besides contracts, uh, looking into residuals, finding money for you. You know, there's the conservatory. They offer uh, a couple of days where you can do free videotaping for your um, self-taping for auditions. 
there are a lot of instructors that volunteer, a lot of actors that are that are working or have worked for a long time or have really have some information to, to impart. So that that's important to be informed and look into what the union's offering you. And please vote. Now this goes not only for our union, but of course in general. Yeah. You've got to get informed and you have to vote. There are reps that go to visit sets. Oh, okay. if, if there's a, ever a problem, uh, the set on a set, and or you want to talk to the union, is very good about confidentiality. SAG AFTRA Foundation, Foundation at YouTube has a bunch of great videos in every area of of the craft as well as the business to help you go run after you see this, but go yeah. watch. Watch this stuff, it's excellent. I have to take some classes to get me in the right mindset of being okay with having a job other than being an actor. So tell me where you took these classes from. I went to the Actors Fund. There were their classes on finances, their classes on careers and understanding what else you can do besides acting. There's a lot of services, free services that a lot of actors don't even know about. I didn't know about that. Yeah, and it's also open to people in the industry who are not actors. Correct. So if, if you're a comic, if you're a makeup uh, artist, a makeup artist, editor. if you're an editor, mm -hmm. if you're a camera person, you can go to the Actors yes. Fund and get these these classes, which are amazing. Anyone who has ever worked in our own business and can produce a, a pay stub. Yes, and, and, and can produce a space. Yes. There's a wonderful organization, the Actors Fund, that is for you. A lot of people are struggling terribly. They're either losing their insurance because they're not working enough, or they are really having a hard time making the transition if they you know, did one type of acting and now they find themselves in a different category. The Actors Fund is available. I can tell you something really interesting about the Actors Fund. It really is made for anyone that is or ever has worked in the, in the, the business. I think one of the scariest things about the lives of actors or creatives is that most of them really don't know what to do with their money. There are so many people that end up with issues because they don't know how to budget their money. They actually don't know how to get the top dollar for what they're doing. I, I think what the reason that you want to work, you want to have a career that makes you happy, but you also have to survive. You want to make money. I started Abundance Bound specifically to help actors, artists, and creative professionals. I wish that I'd received financial education in high school, frankly, but definitely in college, at the conservatory. But yes, when we get out here and we start pursuing professional careers, this is what we need. Miara was the biggest wake up call I ever had when it comes to money and finances. And I just want to plug this because it's great. Um, Miata Doga teaches a great class, um, cash flow, flow, budgeting. There's a fantastic class about the philosophy of money. However, we have learned to grow up with money follows us around. I really I've have taken all of them. Oh, you've taken them. And they are amazing. Yes. yes. Something that till this day I tell to my fellow actors is something she said to all of us, but of course I take it like she, she was telling me, you have to take responsibility for your money and expecting that your art is going to finance the rest of your life could be a little unrealistic. And when she started putting the numbers in that board and was showing us what it meant for somebody who had, let's say, seven guest stars, which is a dream for any actor in a year, and how that would not cover the cost of living in LA, I think that all of us were like, this is real. You know, we do have to figure something else out. There's a big push once you get your, your things sorted out, there's a big push for you to start thinking if there's a side hustle out there, if you can create something. I think that what happens with creatives, it's it's like a double-sided coin. On the one side, you're passionate about doing something. You know, I feel it, I got the vibe. And then on the other, it's like, oh, how do I make this practical? Mm -hmm. how, 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 do, how am I practical about making something happen? Let's just completely shatter the myth of the starving artist, right? This idea 
that I have to starve. I have to be willing to suffer, to sacrifice everything if I want to be successful. I think that that's nonsense, and I think that it is keeping artists small. Tied to that is the idea that our money is separated from our art, right? That I'm over here focused on my art, and therefore this money thing has to be something just in the background because I don't want it to distract from my art. They are inextricably linked. And so rather than seeing money as this thing that I don't want to deal with or I have to deal with, see it as what actually supports everything that you love, not just your creativity, but your family, your relationships, your ability to make a difference in this world. Our relationship with money has to be one that we treasure and value because by valuing it and treasuring it, we are also valuing and treasuring our hmm. heart. As an actor, why do I need a press person? Okay, so to gain attention, right, to your talents, right? You really, that's the goal is, I want people to know I'm out there, that I exist, that I can get attention, that I'm good, that I'm skilled, you know, that, that I wanna be hired again, you know, and the more people see you from a credible source, right? It's not your mom saying, oh, check out my daughter who's on this show. The best time to sort of work with a publicist is when you have something coming up that's gonna premiere. And the reason for that is because that's when the press is gonna have the most interest in you. It's hard for a, a, a reporter to create a story about somebody who has nothing going on currently. There are people who are A-listers, who are you know big stars, and they've got a publicist all the time because they've got things going on all the time. They're permanent on their team. Yes, always, mm -hmm. always. Your own personal publicist is there for you, not just for this project. They're looking at, right now we're gonna use this project to position to get you some opportunities, but we're gonna plant seeds for all of the other things that you're working on. If they do not have a publicist hired, which a lot of people starting out can't afford, then they must uh, read up on marketing and public relations and see how they can start practicing that themselves. And by that I mean now that we have social media, make sure that you put together a very strong, robust social media presence that is unified and that has a brand message to it. Everybody can do this themselves if, they, if you have the time and you don't have the budget to bring in somebody even affordable like me. If you just you, you can't, it's okay. You can still do stuff. Write a press release. There are lots of examples online. Google press releases, you know, and you could entertainment press release. Things will come up. But basically it's the, the who, what, where, and when, and why of, of any project, of anything. So you want to be able to have that. In addition to that, you want to have good, some good photos, not only of yourself, but of your whatever project, everybody else who's been with you. You want to have some good video. And then whatever other assets that are going to be helping to tell the story. Maybe there's more, there's more photos, there's other kinds of behind the scenes, biographies, you know, those kinds of, all the background material. Investigate and research some outlets. Start with your hometown. Most people are not, I mean, there are a lot of people from large cities, but even large cities hone in on your local, those little free circulars. You know, they're always looking for content. Community papers. Exactly. They're, I mean, it doesn't matter so much. It's funny because I tell everybody, hometown newspapers do the most lovely, beautiful, beautiful feature style articles with lots of images. They make you look awesome most of the time, right? And when you share that, when that's published then online and you're sharing that link, nobody, I mean, nobody is going, well, who said, who wrote that? What, who, who, what, what paper was that? Oh, I don't know that. Most people are just seeing the headline or seeing the image and they're clicking and they're going, how cool is that? So you can include your bio, you can include your press clicks to you know links, you can pull a, a, a blurb or a clip, a taste of different articles that you got. You can encompass all of that so it gives a broader picture of your whole career. If you don't have a lot or you have like one really good one, 
that's when a mini, like a smaller version of it could be really good. You could just focus it on that one project, on that one character, on that one role, because if you're using that to try to get more roles like that one, that would be smart. So when it comes to an EPK, that is really what you're telling, is the story is a visual, because otherwise you just send them your resume, which is written out. So you want to use those photos, and that you can pull photos from behind the scenes, BTS stuff, you can pull you from, if you can get a still from the project, like you in it, great. You can include your headshot. That's usually, you know, I use a, a, your main headshot either on the first or the last page, right? In the last pages, you do like a contact page. And you, they don't have to be a lot of pages. If you don't have a lot to work with, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Highlight what you do. That's the main thing. It's just highlighting your strengths. If you have six to eight actor friends or acquaintances, I strongly suggest you start an actor support group with your peers. When I first arrived in Los Angeles, I was very fortunate to find out about a group called ART, Actors Rapping Together. It was a group of 24 actors who met every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. We gave each other tips about acting and the business. The topics range from acting classes, photographers, places to edit your reels, upcoming showcases, auditions, headshots, co-reading classes, and on and on and on. The main rule of the group was that you couldn't come to the meetings more than twice consecutively without having helpful information for someone in the group or the group as a whole. The group booked casting executives, directors, writers, voiceover actors, agents, and managers to come speak with us. Each member was required to book some guests to come and speak to us. Everybody in the group brought something different to the table, which made the information fruitful for everyone involved. We also paid monthly dues to pay for the room rental. It's also important to have rules for the group and implement them regularly. Be the actor they love to see, come in, and hate to see leave. The more you get to know your agents and make an investment in them, the more they will invest in you. And make sure to stay in constant contact without being a pain in the butt or obnoxious. Check in with your agent every two weeks, and it works best if you have something new to report. Like a milestone, you got 10,000 followers on your social media page, or you met an influential person in the business, or you're working on your own project. Every six weeks, remember to bring them something. That way, they'll be happy to receive your calls. For years, I was under the illusion that if I just got the right representation, my life would be glorious. But it is a myth. I have learned that even blockbuster actors that can open a movie want the same thing. That mythical agent. Honey, let me tell you something. They do not exist. You see, agents usually have more than 50 clients to handle at the same time. And you're not their main priority. And if they're a smaller agency, they're just trying to figure out how to keep the lights on. And if they are a huge agency, they are catering to that 1% of that clientele that is bringing in a gazillion dollars. So instead of worrying about what agency to go to, shift your thinking. If you're with a smaller agency and they're getting you out for work, you are at the best place possible because that agent is working hard to make sure that that money is coming in, unlike the big agency. How do you get in the Academy of Television? I will say that I'm a proud member. I've been in for a long time. Um, it's a great organization. And everything we, that, we, that we're talking about can be found um, as far as the qualifications are emmys.org, so you can go there. <laughs> and every profession, whether you're a costumer, an editor, an actor, a writer, there are, there are requirements, you know, qualifications that you have to have. And they have to be credits in the television industry. You have to have worked there. And it also in a certain span of time. So you can go there. So they're, they're different for every, every profession. For performers like myself and Meredith, I, I believe it's eight credits. But there's different levels of membership also. You can also be a student and get a student membership. 
so again, all the information is there, and it's and it's really wide open because even at the level of a membership for the performers, there's an associate membership where if you don't have enough credit, you can begin there, and then you can grow to become a an, a voting active member. I'm a baby in the academy. I've I've only been in it probably two and a half years, and I actually knew nothing about it. Like it was this elite thing that out there, which is why it's so important that we're talking about it, because it was this thing that honestly I could have probably joined years ago, but I had no idea. So I was brought to an event and that was the first time I, I understood what what it was about. But I still because I was so misinformed, I just thought, oh, I'm I'm years away from that. I actually got friends to join, watched them join because they were series regulars and I just still thought I didn't have enough credits. Turns out I absolutely did. The she Latin only has 109 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> the more um, informed we are, the better choices we make as artists. It, it's There are so many opportunities. You really do have to 